morning from Beijing. You're watching The World Today. I'm Hona. We begin in the Chinese capital, where authorities are briefing the media on the path towards building a beautiful China. Today's briefing is part of a series of government updates on China's development since the 18th National Congress of the Communist Party of China. It comes ahead of the 20th CPC National Congress, which is expected to convene on October the 16th. Let's listen. In. Today is the 32nd of our press conferences, and we're glad to be joined by Minister Huang Renqiu of the Ministry of Ecology and Environment to talk about implementing new development philosophy, uh, philosophy and building a beautiful China where man and nature coexist in harmony. And he will also address your questions. Now let me give the floor to Mr. Huang. Thank you, dear friends from the press, good morning. As the Communist Party of China will soon convene its 20th National Congress, I am very glad to brief you on our historical achievements in building ecological civilization and conserving the environment over the past 10 years since the 18th National Congress of the CPC. All of you have witnessed the historical progress together with me, and you have, through your own work, contributed to this process. I would like to also express our deep felt appreciation. In the past 10 years, we have seen historical progress in various areas of the party's work. This is true, also true in environmental protection. We have significantly deepened our awareness, taken the biggest ever measures, and achieved the most rapid and notable results. With unprecedented efforts, the party center committee has been focused on environmental protection from philosophy, rule of law, institutions, organization, and style of work, a number of fundamental pioneering and far-reaching actions have been taken. This is how we have been able to make the historical and overarching achievements. We are now more proactive in our work. And we have created a number of wonders in green development and ecological preservation. Our production has been improved, the people's lives are better off, and the ecology has been improved. Major steps have been taken in building a beautiful China. In terms of philosophy, to sustain the development of the Chinese nation, General Secretary Xi Jinping has advanced a number of new concepts, ideas, and strategies. Which together form the Xi Jinping thought on ecological conservation, and they provide a fundamental guidance for our work. In terms of uh, strategic planning, now, building a beautiful China is one of the goals of building a modern socialist country. Developing ecological civilization is one of the five sphered integrated plan, and the harmonious coexistence of man and nature is part of the basic strategy of developing socialism with Chinese characteristics. Green is now part of the new development philosophy, and the pollution prevention and control is one of the three key battles we are fighting. So we have a well-established strategic plan. In terms of the measures of reform, we have reformed the management system for environmental protection and resources management, established and operationalized a central inspection, assessment and accountability, responsible persons for rivers and red lines of ecological protection, discharge licenses and damages, compensation. We have uh, formulated and amended over 30 laws and regulations in this area, so we have a much stronger institutional system to ensure our work. 
On ecological quality in 2021, national average concentration of PM 2.5 in cities at and above the prefecture level dropped by 34.8 percent compared with 2015, and the proportion of Class 1 to 3 surface water nationwide increased to 84.89 percent. Soil environment risk was effectively controlled. The importation of solid waste was completely banned, thus achieving the goal of zero import of solid waste. Natural reserves account for 18 percent of the country's land area. And the population of more than 300 species of rare and endangered wildlife has steadily increased, vividly demonstrating the harmonious coexistence between man and nature. On green and low carbon development, over the past decade, national carbon dioxide emission per unit of GDP has dropped by 34.4 percent, and the proportion of coal in total energy consumption has dropped from 68.5 percent to 56 percent. China ranks the first worldwide on the scale of renewable energy development as well as the production of and sales of NEVs. Last year, China also launched the world's largest carbon emission trading market. We can see that Green has increasingly become the distinctive feature of high-quality development. Friends from the media, China has entered a new stage of development. General Secretary Xi Jinping stressed that on the new journey of building a modern socialist country in all respects, we need to pay more attention to environmental protection. We have promoted the conclusion, signing, entry into force, and implementation of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, and announced that China will strive to peak carbon dioxide emissions by 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. We successfully held the first phase of COP15 in Kunming and published the Kunming Declaration. China also promoted the development of the Green Belt and Road. China is now an important participant, contributor, and pace setter in the development of global ecological civilization. Friends from the media, China has entered a new stage of development. General Secretary Xi Jinping stressed that on the new journey of building a modern socialist country in all respects, the entire party and the whole country should maintain strategic resolve in strengthening the development of ecological civilization, focus on promoting the comprehensive green transition of development and strive to build a beautiful China where man and nature live in harmony. Looking forward, the ministry will follow the guidance of Xi Jinping thought on ecological civilization, earnestly implement decisions and appointment of the CPC Central Committee and the State Council to coordinate carbon reduction, pollution reduction, green development and ecological growth, so as to promote high-quality development and high-quality life through ecological protection. Friends from the media, last July, we, the ministry has established the, Xi Jinping thought, the Center for Xi Jinping Thought on Ecological Protection, and it has become an important base for our study and practice, and we welcome your participation and your support. We hope that through our efforts, green can be the most distinctive, significant, and solid color of a beautiful China. We will take concrete steps to greet the successful convocation of the 20th Party co Congress. That's all for my briefing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wang. Please ask your questions. Since the 18th Party Congress, China has declared and launched a battle against pollution. In the whole process, 
My question is that what are the changes in our work of ecological and environmental protection? And what are the measures looking forward? Thank you for your question. Ecological environment is an important political issue significant to the party's mission and purpose, as well as a major social issue. Since the 18th Party Congress, the party central committee, with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, has been making unprecedented efforts to develop ecological civilization and protect the environment. One of the major initiatives is the fight against pollution. This has been playing a guiding role in our effort. President Xi Jinping stressed that no matter how difficult the mission is, we must face up to it and have the courage and resolve to make efforts and win the battle against pollution. Keeping his instruction in mind, we have been making unprecedented efforts in pollution reduction and witnessed good results in our efforts. Major phased targets has been reached or exceeded, and we've seen good improvements in our environment. I believe that all of you can witness those changes. Over the years, blue skies and white clouds have become what we see every day. People now have a stronger sense of happiness, fulfillment and security. According to the survey done by the authority in China, more than 90% of Chinese people are satisfied with the environment in China. And all of the results can be summarized in three aspects. First, air quality has undergone historic changes. National every, annual average concentration of PM2.5 has been reduced from 46 microgram per cubic meter in 2015 to 33 in 2020. And 30 last year in 2021, which is historically lower than the WHO Phase 1 transition value of 35. The ratio of good air quality days reached 87.5%, increase of 6.3 percentage points from 2015. China achieved the fastest increase of air quality in the world, according to a report by Bloomberg. The improvement of air quality in China in the seven years from 2013 to 2020 is equivalent to what the United States has achieved in the more than 30 years since the adoption of the Clean Air Act. Second, water quality has undergone significant changes. In the past decade, good quality water resources nationwide was up by 23.3 percentage points to 84.9 percent, which is close to the level to developed countries. The proportion of poor quality water was down by 9.7 percentage points. Third, the quality of the soil environment has undergone fundamental changes. The first soil pollution prevention and control law was issued, which is a very important legislation. According to the law, we have carried out detailed investigation on national agricultural land and construction land. The trend of worsening soil pollution has been effectively curbed. In the 14th five-year plan period, the CPC Central Committee has pointed out that in our battle against pollution, efforts need to be made in the following aspects. From the 13th five-year plan to the 14th five-year plan, focus has been changed 
in the battle against pollution with wider coverage and higher requirements, as well as bigger difficulties. So that we need to continue to make efforts in even larger areas and with stronger intensity, so as to address those problems. There are the three major considerations. First, at the strategic level, we need to maintain strategic resolve on the direction and intensity of efforts. The improvement in ecological environment is significant, however, it is still at a relatively low level. There is still a gap between people's urgent expectation and the scenarios that we see nowadays. So we need to pay more attention and put the environmental protection in the overall picture of economic and social development. Better coordinate COVID response and economic and social development and ecological environmental protection. Safeguard the bottom line of ecological and environmental security. Second, at the tactical level, first, we need to follow a precise scientific and lawful approach to treat pollution. Pre precise measures need to be adopted, targeting the problem, time, area, and measures. We need to use legal means to manage environmental protection and protect the ecological environment. And on the other hand, we need to adopt a comprehensive and systemic approach to, to address the root causes and coordinate carbon reduction, pollution reduction, green expansion, and economic growth. The five coordinations is very important. That is, the coordination between pollution reduction and carbon synergy. This is not only important to the protection of our environment, but also important to addressing the root causes. And the second coordination is between pollution, the uh, PM 2.5 control and ozone layer control. The lowering of pollutants can curb the trend of the synergy between PM 2.5 and ozone pollution. In 2021, the concentration of the two pollutants has been decreased. We also need to coordinate between water resources and water environment. A good water environment hinges on a good water ecological system. We need to have good grass and swimming fish in our waters. So efforts need to be made in protecting biodiversity. We also need to coordinate between urban and rural ecological environmental protection. Weak links still exist in rural protection. And efforts need to be made in this area. It also means to coordinate between traditional pollutants and new pollutants. New pollutants, risks management system needs to be well established and implemented. We have already implemented the eight major aspects of our campaign against pollution. In the battle for blue skies, we need to eliminate heavily polluted weather, ozone pollution, and diesel truck pollution. In the fight for clean water, we need to eliminate black smelly waters, protect key sea areas, as well as the ecological protection and restoration in the Yangtze River and the Yellow River. In a battle for clean soil, we need to focus on the treatment of rural sewage and black smelly water, and win the battle for the agriculture and rural pollution treatment. Looking forward, we need to, we will make more efforts to protect people's livelihood and address people's needs. Thank you.
Thank you. Water protection is critical to improving life quality and high quality development. What progress has been made in improving water quality? Thank you for your question. As what I've said before, water is the most basic element of ecological environment. And clean water is also what people want to see. This is also our goal. Since the 18th Party Congress, following the decisions and deployment of the Central Committee and the State Council, we have carried out the campaign to protect water resources. We have achieved fundamental changes in water ecological environmental protection in China, which can be summarized in the following three aspects. First, the system of water resources protection has been improved. The Water Pollution Prevention and Control Law was revised, and the Yangtze River Protection Law and a series of other laws and regulations were formulated and amended, which solidified the foundation of the rule of law for water pr protection. Taking the opportunity of improving the legal system, we also established a, an authority to protect water bodies and water resources. The total number of state-controlled sections of water increased from 1900 to 3600 in the 14th five-year plan period, covering the 10 major water river basins, cities at prefecture levels and above, as well as major functional areas. In, a full, in the recent years, 18 provinces <coughs> and 13 rivers has been covered in the system of protecting rivers and lakes. Coordination has been re achieved between upper streams to and lower streams. Effective and significant results has been seen in the battle for blue skies. In the Yangtze River Protection and Restoration Campaign, we have found more than 60,000 outfalls and outlets into the river. 16,000 environmental damage cases has been rectified. And the Class II river quality, water quality has been achieved in the mainstream of Yangtze River. For consecutive years, more than 17,000 outlets in the upper reaches of um, Yellow Rivers and some midstream reaches has been found, and the water quality has reached or exceeded good level. Together with other competent departments, we've made significant efforts and launched a special campaign against urban black smelly water bodies and basically el eliminated 295 black smelly water bodies in the built-up areas of cities. Water pollution is also a issue that people pay a lot of attention to. So now this black smelly water has been turned into beautiful scenery. 99,000 kilometers of new sewage networks has been built, equivalent to more than two laps around the Earth's equator. 1,200 industrial parks at the provincial level above has been included in the treatment network. A special campaign has been launched to ensure the safety of drinking water. More than 10,000 problems at 2,804 water origins has been rectified and investigated. Third, the ecological protection and restoration of rivers and lakes has been has witnessed positive progress. We have strengthened ecological protection and restoration of river and lake shorelines. We regrained 12 million square meters of river shoals which significantly improved the environment of the Yangtze River. The Tai Lake 
and our high lake has been included in the industrial transformation campaign so as to improve the environment in these areas. Pollution has been addressed with more concrete actions so as to crack down on illegal actions. In the past decade, the quality of water resources in China has undergone fundamental changes. A number of typical cases emerged. For example, the largest freshwater lake, Baiyuan Dian Lake, now has a very good quality of water resources by implementing instructions of President Xi Jinping. We have been making great efforts of improving the water quality of Bai Yuan Dian area. In 2021, the precipitation area of Bai Yuan Dian Lake now reached Class 3 standards of water quality, which is a breakthrough achievement. No matter it is the water quality or the environment in the lake, we can see a good scenery demonstrating the harmony between man and nature. Many species that haven't been seen for many years re-emerged, and wild birds returned to these areas. The number of species increased to 237. The pearl of North China shined again. In 2021, Similar cases also exist. Of around 18 cases has been included in the uh, examples of good protection of water resources. Entering the new development stage, the focus of water protection will shift from water pollution prevention and control to water resources, ecology, and environment system management. Special efforts will be made to enhance the protection and restoration of water ecosystems, strengthen weak links, and improve quality and efficiency so as to promote the protection work and lay a solid foundation of building a beautiful China. Thank you. China has made notable progress in cleaning up the air. People are sharing pictures of the blue skies. So how has China been able to achieve such great progress in such a short period of time and what measures have been taken and uh, what are the things to be done in the future? Thank you for your question. On air quality, I, I'd also like to share with you a picture taken at night. This is a picture of star trails taken at Wumen of the Summer Palace. You can see the stars in the skies and their trails which are very clear to the eye. In order to capture such a picture, we need excellent air quality, very clean and clear air. So this picture is a clear example of Beijing's progress in cleaning up the air. In fact, I also have some statistics on this picture. In 2013, the PM2 levels were at nearly 90 mg per cubic meter. In fact, 89.5 in 2021, it was 33, down by 63.1%, about two-thirds. The number of heavily polluted days dropped from 58 
in 2013 to only eight last year. And this year so far, we've only had two. So blue skies are no longer a luxury, unlike in the past when it only happened on the big days. This is a regular sight now in Beijing to have blue skies. What has happened in Beijing is part of what is happening across China. In some of the key regions and also around the country, we are seeing similar improvements. Over the past 10 years, in 10, 74 key cities, the PM2.5 levels dropped by an average of 56 percent. The number of heavily polluted days was reduced by 87 percent. In 2021, Chinese cities only was redu reduced their number of heavily polluted days by 51 percent. China is the first developing country to take on PM2.5 challenge and is acclaimed as the fastest in curbing the pollution. These progress are this is attributable to the leadership of the CPC Central Committee. The government has rolled out a number of key measures, such as the 10 pieces of regulations, identifying the three key battles. Different regions and departments are also working together, and society-wide efforts are also being made to clean up the air. In terms of the key steps we have taken, I believe four measures deserve a mention. First of all is to transform our energy mix to speed up the green and low carbon transformation. Clean energy made up two-thirds of the increase in energy consumption over the past 10 years, and the number of coal boilers and kilns re was reduced from close to 500,000 to less than 100,000. Clean heating is being implemented in northern China, and over 27 million households no longer use coal as their heating sources, which also made their life better, better and improved life in these improved air quality in these regions by reducing the use of coal powder by over 60 million tons. Second is industrial mix and high quality growth. We phased out outdated capacity and dealt with excess capacity. This includes 300 million tons of iron and steel, 400 million cement, and 150 million weight, carbon weight of sheet glass. We have built the world's largest clean coal-fired power system, and we are retrofitting iron and steel emission procedures. We have already completed work for 680 million tons of crude steel. And third is transportation structure. We have phased out old and used vehicles and high-emission vehicles, over 30 million of them, in fact. We have the world's largest uh, clean energy vehicles in terms of their numbers, and the oil quality and uh, emissions intensity have also seen great improvements up to international standards. Fourth, we are improving municipal environment management. Dust management is a key part at uh, construction sites and uh, in areas of gravel excavations, less dust is being emitted. We have established a strong supervisory network to reduce more burning in spring, open-air barbecue in summer, straw burning in autumn, coal powder burning in winter, and the trash burning around the year, these stubborn problems have been effectively managed. Technology has played a key part. Over 2,000 personnel have joined this battle. We have also developed 
a nation, national level early warning and reporting system for PM 2.5 to increase our accuracy to around 90%. This has proved very important for our work. At the same time, we are aware that we still have a lot to do to build a beautiful China. We will continue to reduce emission and pollution, jointly manage PM2.5 and ozone, tackle the discharge of various pollutants, and promote the green transformation of industry, energy, and transportation to protect our blue skies and improve air quality. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Debbie Edward from ITV News. This summer here in China and across the region in places like India and Pakistan, we saw what appeared to be the accelerated effects of climate change. I want to get your view on what we've experienced this summer. And do you think that China can still reach its targets on decarbonization and on emissions, given it's facing these extreme events when we've seen some parts of the country facing power outages? Thank you. 好，请翻译一下。英国独立电视台，这个夏天，中国和世界其他地方，例如印度和巴基斯坦，都遭受了气候变化导致的极端天气困扰。中国在面临这些极端气候变化的时候，还会完成自己设定的去碳化目标吗
So what we, did we do in the past decade? First, we have steadily promoted energy restructuring. The proportion of coal in primary energy consumption fell from 68.5% to 56%. Non-fossil energy consumption increased by 6.9 percentage points to 16.6%. Installed renewable energy generation capacity increased by 2.1 times. Wind, light, solar, water, and biomass power generation capacity ranked the first in the world. Second, we continue to optimize and upgrade industrial structure. We vigorously developed green and low carbon industries, strictly controlled the expansion of high energy consumption and high emission projects, and phased out backward production capacity in accordance with the law. China has supported an average of 6.85 percent of annual average economic growth with uh, with the uh, three percent in energy consumption strategic and emerging industries are developing and booming for example, the NEV production and sales also ranks the world, ranks the first in the world. In the past decade, forest coverage has increased by 7.1 percent, reaching 227 million hectares. Forest carbon sink has increased by 7.3 percent, reaching 839 million tons of CO2 per year, which can offset China's annual car carbon, carbon emissions. Fourth, we have promoted the development of national carbon market, and we also strengthened capacity building in weak links such as agricultural development and rural areas. We also launched the world's largest carbon market. On July 16, 2021, the National Carbon Emissions Trading Market was officially launched. Coal power plants was, were included in the network, so making the market the world's largest carbon market. As of yesterday, accumulated trading volume of carbon emission quota was 195 million tons, which effectively tapped into the role of incentives and constraints to cut emissions. China also made its contribution to global climate governance, upholding the vision of building a community with a shared future for mankind. China has constructively participated in multiple multilateral processes. We made historic contributions to the conclusion, introduced and smooth inter implementation of the Paris Agreement. By the end of August this year, we have reached to 1.2 billion RMB of, of accumulated volume of South South Cooperation projects. Addressing the outstanding problems in climate change is an important task for the nation. So we have a solemn commitment to building a communi community with a shared future for mankind. China will match words with its deeds by fully implementing the one plus n policy system, actively participate in and lead the global climate governance so as to make new and greater contributions to building a beautiful China and addressing climate change. Over the past year, we are seeing great improvements in China's natural environment and the spe uh, species. My question is what China has been doing in protecting the ecology. And on COP15, China is the chair of the second phase of COP15. What goals does China have? Thank you for your question. 
A beautiful ecological environment is the basis for the harmony between many nature. Over the past decade, China has prioritized ecological protection, and President Xi Jinping stressed time and again that we need to protect land, grasslands, and deserts. We need to make efforts in the protection of ecological system. So our efforts can be summarized in the following five aspects. First, in the past decade, China's ecological protection system has been improved. China has amended more than 20 laws and regulations, such as the biosafety law. The rule of law has become stronger for ecological protection. On institutional initiatives, we have set up the first red line policy in ecological protection by designating more than 25% of national land area as ecological protection area. We established a system of natural reserves, mainly natural parks, which protected more than 70% of wildlife in China. Dolphins in rivers, or jiangtun, we re-emerged in many areas in China. The species increased by 30 in the past several years. The past decades also witnessed the strongest efforts in the supervision of ecological protection. Through inspection made by the CPC Central Committee, a number of outstanding damage problems has been addressed and solved. For example, the Qilian Mountain have been transformed from heavily damaged area to full of grain. The north face of Qilian, Qilian Mountain eliminated disorderly development and started orderly withdrawal. For consecutive five years, we have launched a campaign to protect ecological environment in these areas. Third, in the past decade, we have consolidated China's ecological security barrier. We followed the integrated protection and systemic management approach of protecting mountains, waters, forests, lakes, grasslands, and deserts. More than 20 pilot projects has been launched to protect the ecology and restore environment in the above-mentioned areas. The once extinct species colored ibis in the picture re-emerged in our nature. And we also see the gorilla in the picture, this is a extremely endangered species. But in the past several years, we see expanding habitats of this species. Critically endangered endemic species re-emerged in the wild. Fourth, in the past decade, we have turned green mountains to golden mountains in innovative ways. We have designated five batches of ecological civilization areas, 362 in total, to implement the Xi Jinping thought on ecological civilization. This is also a new way for us to achieve high-quality development. In Jiawang district, Jiangsu province, a significant transformation was made to turn a city of coal ash to a city of green hills and lakes. Fifth, in the past decade, China was deeply involved in global biodiversity governance. We actively implemented the CBD and its protocols and implemented 
the conservation targets in the past decade, which exceeded the global average. In October last year, as the president of COP15, we successfully held the Kunming meeting. President Xi Jinping delivered a keynote speech announcing the establishment of biodiversity fund and other initiatives. The theme of COP15 meeting is very good and announced to the world that China is determined to follow in its philosophy and approach of protecting biodiversity. By doing so, China contributed its fair share and its solution to protecting biodiversity in the world. The second phase of COP15 has become a topic of great interest. Based on domestic international COVID response situation, it has been decided that the second phase of COP15 will be held in Montreal, Canada. From December the 7th to 19th this year. Although the venue, venue has been changed, the theme and the theme of COP15 will remain the same. That is, building a community, a shared future for all life on Earth. China will continue to play a leading role at the chair and strive to promote a pragmatic, an ambitious post-2020 global biodiversity framework and contribute its, con its efforts to advancing the global diversity protection process. Thank you. That's Chinese authorities briefing the media on the country's efforts on environmental conservation towards the goal of beauty.